you and I are not alone. There's a lot of people anxious and upset. The trouble is, sometimes people decide to take it into their own hands and they demonstrate, protest, even get violent as if somehow the way to restore order and, and safety is through violence. Doesn't really work, does it? Just creates more and more. There's this a coup of Turkey. The, the, the issue there is Turkey is a nation that is a NATO member. It's an ally of the United States. We have treaties, formal treaties, with all these nations that are part of NATO. We have an Air Force base there in Sir in Sirlik, in Sirlik. Yeah, and um, it's there, and we are using it to fly aircraft in this uh, air war that they're campaigning against ISIS in uh, Syria. So um, these, this is an important location in the world. It happens to be the bridge between Asia and Europe, between the Middle East and Europe. So it's a it's a, a very strategically located country and important. So we're upset about. What's going to happen there? When the uh, current leader remains in power, he's also pushing for the, the mullahs and for uh, Sharia law in Turkey. So it's going to become more oppressive on people by supporting the current leadership. So that's just one thing. Another thing is terror attacks around the world. This is going on everywhere. You know, in France, have been hit multiple times in many other nations, as you know. And then there's conflict with, this, with ISIS, which I've explained before is this, this desire that these Muslims have to bring back their, their Messiah. And the way they do that is through their own blood. So they don't think like we do. You cannot deal with them the same way we think in the West. And then we have tension and racial conflict. I uh, did a funeral service Friday, and I was, quite frankly, the only uh, white person at that funeral, and I was very honored, and I told them I was very honored to be there to minister to them, and I, and I told them, I said, oh, by the way, I love you, and there is a thing you can do about it, they all <laughs> cracked up, and I just said, uh, I want you to know, all lives matter, and they agreed, agreed with me about that, and I thought it was wonderful to say every person's life matters, not just some, and this is wrong, and from a Christian standpoint, you read the rest of the scripture, you're going to see that out of every tribe and every nation, every tongue, there will be people in heaven. So we need to get along here, don't we? And then there's more things. There's murder of these law enforcement officers, which I think does not help the cause of anyone. I mean, does that kind of make more peace and people get more respect that way? No. It's, it's a horrible thing that, that has been done. And then the investigation. You want to have an honest investigation into it. And then there's illegal immigration where we got people coming across the border. You have no idea who these people are, and you have a lot of people that are not even in the labor pool. I heard a statistic that 92 million Americans, adults, are not working. 92 million, and everything's fine because I see the unemployment rates like under five percent. But I'm like, they don't count any of the people that aren't in the labor pool. 92 million people. That's unbelievable. And then the government is taking individual liberty, left and right. And then uh, the last thing is we have the elections coming. May I suggest this? I never have, since I've been here, and I've never done this in the ministry, I've never asked anyone to vote a certain way. Would you please pray? Would you please be informed? And would you please vote? It is extremely important that every citizen who is of voting age votes. If you don't vote, you might say, well, I'm a Christian and I can't find a perfect candidate. If you don't vote, you're going to get the other candidate. So I'm just telling you right now, you need to vote. The leaders understand that when Christians vote, they need to pay attention to us. They will pay no attention to us if it continues that 80% don't vote. Christians need to be voting, speaking, so they'll pay attention to us. Thank God. By the way, life is more than food and clothing. Life is even more than your physical health. The life we're talking about is a very deep, 
very deep dimension of your life. And the, the, the dimension we're talking about is relationship. With God, your life is worth more than food, clothing, physical health, how you feel today. It's relationship. That's life. To have a relationship with God is true life. To have a relationship that you maintain with one another is life. Life is relationship. It's more than that. Relationship is more important than money or food or clothing or this or that. Relationship. It takes away all my anxiety because I begin remembering things like, oh yeah, he's holding me in his hand. Oh yeah, he can heal anything. Oh yeah, when he doesn't heal me, he can take me home. No matter what happens, he's already prepared a real place for me in heaven. I'm going there someday. And uh, nobody in here is in a hurry to get there, I don't think. But I want you to know, when you leave this life, the one who takes you by the hand is the one that died for you. And the one who prepared a real place for you is the one that died for you, and he loves you. I realize there are people who are unemployed. I mentioned it. How many people are not even in the labor pool anymore so they don't count them? If you lost your own, you, you completely used up all your unemployment, you're not in the labor pool, you, they don't even count that. You're not a statistic anymore. That is nonsense. It's a lie. It's manipulation and deceit at best. I think it's evil. It's an attempt to try to deceive people. I mean, are, you, are you telling me Americans are so stupid that we actually believe everything's going okay when you've got 92 million people that don't even have a job? Are you kidding? How's that story go? I mean, I'm, I'm from the IRS and I'm here to help you. How many of you believe that? I used to have a, a retired IRS agent in our, in our church. And I don't have to apologize. I'm not trying to insult you, brother. <laughs> and he's in heaven now. But <laughs> i got to tell you, when they say they're here for the federal government to help you, how many of you believe that? I have some people that actually think that. They actually told me that. And I'm, like, I'm not even going to answer that. If you think that, he says, by the way, he says, do not fear. Before he said, don't worry. Now he says, don't be afraid. Don't fear, little flock. He's talking to you and me. He's calling us sheep that are timid and fearful. That's what he's calling us, sheep. It's for your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God looks forward to forgiving those who believe on Jesus. He looks forward to blessing you with heavenly riches, which are more than what... None of our calculators can add it up. God looks forward to the, with joy to what's going to happen when you receive Christ. And he completely transforms your life and he will be with you and never leave you ever. He looks forward to that. That's why he says, don't be afraid. Don't fear. The treasure in the heavens. I mentioned that, didn't I? That doesn't fail. For no thief approaches, nor moth destroys for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I don't want to know. I don't want to see. Some, I haven't mentioned about this, but I want you to know. I do not look at what anybody gives. It's not of my business. None. <coughs> so people might think I know all these things. I don't. I intentionally separate. We have a county committee that counts, and they don't report anything to me other than the total. Do we have enough to pay the bills? That's what I want to know. But I don't know the individuals unless somebody comes up to me and shows it to me. You know, and I'm like, well, you blew my cover there. <laughs> but it's like, I don't look at that because I trust God. That's not my business. And besides, I was told a long time ago to separate myself from my finances and money. I focus on the spiritual things and on people and on the property that we maintain and so we can worship. I don't focus on, on the money. Don't touch money and don't touch women. Right? That's the standard. Billy Graham articulates that to pastors he has in the past. He says, uh, 
There's two kinds of treasure. That which gets old and rots. And that which lasts. I suggest to you, invest your life in that which will last for eternity. That's what I'm talking about. Invest your life in what you have in things that will last for eternity. You'll never regret it. When he looks at your treasure and what you do with it, it tells him where your heart is. Are you anxious? Don't be anxious and don't worry. Put your trust in God. Are you trying to gain control over things which are beyond your control? Do you need to turn it over to God? Pray about it. Let God take control. 